ask your start. Um, the first of the two lectures in the afternoon, ours from Hungary, will be a team presentation, a brief introduction by myself and then uh, five uh, students presenting the case studies from uh, Eastern Europe. Um, the relationship of participatory art versus museums, uh, public collections, public institutions of art, uh, just a general, uh, few general advice. Uh, the major shift is um, from underground art to cultural canon. The story is rooted in the rebellious underground neo avant garde movement of the 1970s, just like John Cage, Ross, and the others. In Eastern Europe, behind the Iron Curtain, similar developments were underway. We have uh, similar key figures uh, of the local art scenes. Um, immediately <clears throat> following the fall of the Berlin Wall from 1990 onwards, um, <clears throat> we came to witness uh, a spread of this uh, uh, cultural uh, project, so to say, of this pattern to ever broader segments of culture. That is one of our remarks, that is to say, from art, from a narrow con uh, concept of contemporary art, neo-avant-garde experimental art, to broader sections of culture. Um, and you can see my second asterisk uh, in the second entry, uh, also enjoying um, <clears throat> the increasing levels of public funding in mainstream institutions. So from underground um, events on the periphery of the art world, moving into the center. Two changes, one, once again, from art to broader spectrum of culture, um, and second, from narrow groups of um, the art world, uh, peripheric um, sections and uh, patterns of, of underground art to amazing institutions. Um, <clears throat> to come to the third entry, uh, by now we can observe a number of artists, uh, curators, and institutions active in this field. Uh, these three participants, so to say, of the art world, the artists, the creators, curators, the mediators, the producers of, of these events and exhibitions, and also some of the institutions, some of the um, forward-looking managers, museum directors, um, administrators, are in for this kind of um, <coughs> cultural production. Uh, what is missing is two things, political support um, from cultural policy, broader figures of the um, political sphere, and consequently through broader uh, media attention, wide public support. So far, it's grown from an underground concern to a broader concern on, of the intelligentsia, of the intellectuals, but still it's not a broad public issue. For an illustration here, just a project by Andrew Currency, Tell Me you love, it, you love Me, which is a multimedia installation, a public installation, partly in the streets, as you can see, partly within institutions, um, where <clears throat> through high-tech uh, installation you can send love through hugging to other people in the city. Um, the students will be talking more about the, the, the case studies. Here, uh, in my few slides, uh, they only serve illustration. Um, now, what are the reasons for the spread of participatory art in, in East, Eastern Europe? First, the institutions uh, in this part of Europe, uh, with the institutions I mean Kunsthandels, uh, museums, um, are still monolithic structures. Uh, for those directors and curators, chief curators, who would like to uh, cycle to a new path, aligning with uh, participatory projects is an excellent way to break free. Second, <clears throat> because of the communist legacy, um, the public discourse, political issues to be talked about, to be contested, to be discussed uh, freely publicly, um, <clears throat> this uh, tradition is still weak. Uh, participatory project, projects often replace or at least temporarily substitute for public discourse. Um, <clears throat> Here we link immediately to the issue of civil society. Very often, participatory projects enjoy funding from non-governmental organizations, from um, um, even private foundations, because they give support 
because they give voice to issues of civil society. It is an alternative word to politics. It is an alternative to official politics. Um, <clears throat> number four, artists are still critical of the old paternalist structures as much as of the new market system of art. For them, it is often a third way to express their concern, their feelings in participatory art. It is uh, a criticism of the old structures as much as of the old, uh, of, the, of the current market economy, uh, the art market. Now, the recent crisis uh, <coughs> supplies an additional um, fueling, so to say, to this uh, strand. Since the <coughs> art market has slipped into a considerable crisis in, uh, in Eastern Europe, even artists who would otherwise be producing objects um, painting, sculpture, they are now being diverted to, to projects and, and work on projects. Um, <clears throat> and finally, an aesthetic concern, don't forget that public sculpture has been very strong, very powerful in Eastern Europe because of the communist ideological backing, because of its uh, ideological function, but of course in a highly politicized version. So there's a strong tradition which some institutions, some curators, some artists have now been trying to overwrite. <clears throat> One example here, the so-called public art project with their uh, peep boxes. Uh, if anyone's interested, it's just again for the quality's sake of administration, um, you'll be able to find everything also in English now in, in the internet on the peep project, what these boxes uh, are for. Uh, the focus points for our case studies now soon to, to be presented by the students. Um, <clears throat> the first one, institutional motivation. Where do we find initiatives taken up by uh, museums, um, constellers, similar institutions to open up? Second, we try to focus on the urban public, thinking also of this Yotabok setting of metropolitan issues. <clears throat> of this uh, dichotomy of metropolis um, global setup of inhabitants coming from overseas um, diverse backgrounds um, in relationship to the locals. Third, young age groups, children here obviously the focus in, in the museum. Um, <clears throat> conflicts of multicultural identity issues, uh, they are now surfacing in Eastern Europe too. And um, since we come from an arts university, um, the university that we are representing from Budapest uh, is an art academy, mm -hmm. a traditional sense of the world. Um, we were trying to bring the examples of experimental art, such as here this one, um, which is uh, a film screening box uh, of um, <clears throat> short films, uh, various documentaries on um, the city. Uh, it's a tem temporary building. It was a project in, in, in the city centre, uh, in the inside, uh, actually a makeup cinema uh, for the audience uh, on their own life, uh, with uh, film screenings about um, their own everyday subsistence, and on the other side, joint graffiti projects uh, led by the artists, including locals. Um, and then finally, the five MA students, let me just briefly introduce them, Christina, Dorotja, Melinda, Esther, and Ilona. Um, and let me say goodbye to you with this image of um, uh, a non-urban uh, project. This is a village project. I deliberately chose this uh, as a final slide, uh, where the artist, Silvia Takács, uh, jointly with the inhabitants of this village, produced uh, a precise copy of, of the village. Um, the houses modeled individually just as they were, everybody painting their house, working on, on their house, and thereby reconstituting their community. Thank you, and then you are, it's your turn.
like to introduce you two projects, which are both Hungarians, and um, they, they have many things in common. They both address very timely um, and very important social issues, um, asking the residents to cooperate uh, and involving the residents to, to react to these social problems. Um, the first is uh, uh, this you are standing here uh, by Ujirányú. Ujirány means new direction or new way. Uh, they are a landscape architect agency with very successful uh, projects from um, almost only in Hungary. Um, and uh, in this project, uh, they made an open photo game, a pool map, uh, they also call this in several Hungarian cities or districts uh, and they are also opening into international surroundings because it can be exported also uh, to many other cities so it's not only a Hungarian uh, specialty. Um, it's interesting why is it a poor map? Here you can see an offline map uh, and still it's a poor map. Uh, refers to a survey which is interactive. Uh, how can an offline map, uh, offline map be interactive? Um, here is nothing of the interactivity which is visible on this map. Uh, you can see a map of the given district in the middle of the district. Uh, you can see uh, the passers by uh, being able to step on it. It is a new kind of, of an installation that they can step on it. Uh, they can see where they live. They can, ch uh, they can check out many useful information of, of this map. Um, but there is also an extra to it, so it's just nothing special uh, if we stop by this. There are these stickers on the boards next to the map uh, with these uh, small colorful bot, dots and uh, each dot represents a feeling about uh, some part of the city. So it's like you can choose a red dot which means you don't like it, you can choose a blue one which means, it, uh, which means uh, that it needs some development and you can choose as, much, uh, as many dots uh, as many you want and you can stick it on, a different, uh, on several places of the map. Um, and here you can see the result. Um, anyone uh, can select places which he finds important. And, um, and it's a very good, good game, also for children, also for adults, because they like playing these games. They like expressing their opinions, mainly about the place where they live, uh, really, uh, mainly about the community uh, which they are part of. And, um, and, uh, and the, the result is also an informative map about our city, about our surroundings, because it's full of uh, colorful points. And, uh, and for the inhabitants, it expresses or, or it makes visible the places which are getting to be the biggest slum. Maybe people see that, oh, I live in the shit is part of the city. Uh, and uh, for many places which are the most popular, and. Um, and, the, and it's very informative that it makes extremely visible uh, the, the specific or the, or the crucial parts of the city. And it should be also important for the leadership that they, uh, that they see what the inhabitants think of their own city, um, uh, what are the crucial uh, points uh, marked in this, in this map. Uh, and it's also the design as a mission, so it's not only design as, as something spectacular, uh, but it's also a social mission. Uh, it inspires people to cooperate and uh, to interactivity. They address timely issues uh, with this and, uh, and it also means uh, social involvement. So it's completely the opposite and the people in Hungary think about design that it's okay, something fancy, uh, something expensive, it's not only that. Um, so yes, uh, the next project uh, was made mainly for the adults, so it's not the children and women at all. Uh, there are very uh, sensitive questions uh, addressed in this project. Um, there was an exhibition in the Palace of Arts, which is uh, also called Kunsthalle Budapest, um, which is uh, the most important place for contemporary exhibitions in, uh, in Hungary. Um, and uh, they exported an exhibition, a part of an exhibition to Kirai Street, which is also a very important part of Budapest. I will talk about this later. Um, so there was the exhibition GPS Unknown Scene. Uh, this, uh, this exhibition was about uh, the feelings of transported Hungarian artists, three uh, transported Hungarian artists, about their feelings about being a transported Hungarian, about being uh, an alien uh, in your, uh, almost your country, uh, about ethnicality and these quite sensitive issues. 
Um, maybe and because we're not all from Europe also, maybe can you in two sentences explain this transnational Hungarian identity oh, that yes. might not for okay. everybody be understandable. So yes, yes, before uh, the world wars there was the big Hungary, which is uh, now the dream of the extreme right wings uh, in Hungary that uh, also parts of Slovakia, Romania and Slovenia and uh, Serbia were part of Hungary. Um, and uh, when there came the peace of the Trianon, or it, was it the part of the Versailles peace, uh, right? <coughs> After it's a long story to cut it short. It's a very long story, uh, a very sensitive story. In Hungarian yeah. minorities living in the neighboring countries, yes. and especially artists now, many of them relocate to Hungary and they yes. come and take it. And, 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 and I think the, 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 the project will explain itself. Okay. okay. Yes. So before uh, this trial and peace, the problem was that many minorities lived in Hungary, like Slovakians, Romanians, etc. After this peace, the problem was that 5 million Hungarians um, got stuck uh, behind uh, the borders of Hungary. Um, and, uh, and, and yes, it's about uh, being uh, beyond the border, but being Hungarian, with a Hungarian mother tongue. Um, Yes, so this was a, a very timely exhibition uh, because it was organized in 2007 when the extreme right uh, started to strengthen and to expand. Uh, so, so it was a very, very timely issue that they addressed uh, with this exhibition. Uh, and part of the exhibition was by Elon Neymat, um, who had the project uh, that um, she placed many boards like this, uh, this size, um, in, in the light. Uh, what's this? Uh, the lamps uh, on, on two parts of the seat, uh, the Kirai Street. Um, uh, the Kirai Street is a very emblematic part of the Jewish quarter uh, in Hungary. It's not uh, only a historically important place because it was at the edge of the ghetto, the former ghetto, uh, but it's also uh, nowadays a very ethnically mixed, uh, colorful, uh, colorful uh, place. Uh, with its own problems uh, because of this ethnical uh, mixture, and um, and there are many uh, many uh, teen attentions about these ethnicalities living together also nowadays, and uh, so so therefore this Kiai Street is also important historically and also nowadays uh, the symbol of this ethnical mixture, and uh, and yes um, you we have to, you have to know about Hungary the, the this mixture about uh, about Hungary. Uh, ethnicalities, uh, that there are many problems with, for example, the gypsies, that they are very poor and uh, people, most people don't only hate them uh, latently, but it's also manifest. That it's also in open communications can come up, that, uh, that, uh, that it's also a trend to hate gypsies and to not even feel ashamed of this. Uh, against the Jews are only the extreme right, but, uh, but you can also feel uh, this tension against the Jews. And, um, and of course, they don't uh, really like the Chinese, neither the Chinese there. Um, and uh, yes, let's talk about the project, the boards. Uh, there were these boards, uh, and the four languages, the four languages of the, of the four nationalities or ethnicalities in Hungary, the main uh, ethnicalities, there were written questions of the Bogart scale. I don't know if you all are aware of the Bogart scale, it's the social distance scale. Um, and there are these questions um, coming from would you accept blah 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 as your neighbor until would you accept blah 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 until there is an end of your country. So the distances are growing or just uh, lessening. Uh, and these questions were asked in the different languages of, of these different nationalities and about these four nationalities. Like would you accept the Chinese as a resident of your city? It was written here in Chinese and Hebrew. Um, Hungarian and Lugari, the main language of the gypsies. Time out, okay. <laughs> so it's over explained. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. And um, what was the lesson of this? That the government's immediate response was quite typical of Hungary, uh, that the boards were placed in the city in the morning of a given day, and at 2 o'clock uh, they had to take them uh, down immediately. Uh, the government stated that it was because it was a very big provocation and a scandal and the residents refused to see it in their city and uh, that, that they, were, uh, they were very much offended by these tables and, 
and uh, the mayor said that one shouldn't deal with tolerance if there is no problem with this. A punchline is often much better than three long sentences. with uh, urban cultural planning and uh, fine art projects it meets in participation under this aegis. So the three projects are, uh, two of them are from Poland and one is a Hungarian one. And yeah, uh, the first one is Apartment X. It was uh, conceived by Matthias Vivienta, so it's it's a ger of German origin, but uh, it has been uh, executed in many uh, different country, uh, countries and uh, cities worldwide. I've, chose the, I've chosen the Polish edition, uh, which, uh, ha uh, which uh, rhymes with this uh, tradition of flying universities, uh, which represent uh, an informal underground way of uh, educating people against the, for example, in the social, social socialist era and previously. So these were uh, short um, uh, plays made by uh, various uh, cultural producers, from filmmakers to to fine artists. And there were two constraints. Uh, the space should not exceed 10 minutes. Uh, it should not be longer than 10 minutes. And they were set in private apartments. And um, for example, in this picture, uh, the play consisted of actually making Christmas decoration and singing carols in a, in a really intimate setting. And it became so part of this uh, family occasion and it also tackled the question of uh, crisis in, in Europe and worldwide uh, by in, in this picture we can see the person trying to sell you in the role of an agent trying to sell you life insurance and um, this was one when uh, sandwiches were ceremonially made and then you can just consume them. Um, mm -hmm. So the next one is uh, also in Warsaw and there was a stadium made in 19... 1955, but by the 80s it was no longer used as a sports venue, although it was the, 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 the whole city was really proud of it. And uh, it, in the early 90s, it, the Vietnamese uh, came here to uh, trade different goods, and, and it, it became a city within a city. And, it shed light on the fact that the Polish society is uh, was was welcoming them, but but later on it it, it shifted to something really different. And so basically, it was a series of. Uh, different interventions in the city and uh, what I've chosen is a trip to Asia which was an acoustic walk uh, um, yeah, it, 
it's, it's uh, in, uh, at the market, you uh, no, it's at the train station, you receive tickets and MP3 player and the map showing the places where the different audio tracks should be played. And the check for the plastic bag you can see on the previous picture. And you were supposed to explore this um, mini society. Yeah, and, and during this thing, you could have a personal conversation about the origin, origins of the Vietnamese immigration to Poland, the oppression and the charter deportations of, and as well as the spectacular careers. And uh, you must know that the Viet Vietnamese Cultural Center is a, a, a okay, I will move on to the Hungarian example, which was shown in the, at the Venice Biennial in 2006, and it was an architectural experiment to show the contemporary migrant culture through architecture and uh, uh, the exchanges of the ideas of uh, stability and uh, representation of the national state into a more flexible uh, design making possible parallel use. So what we can see that the same nodes appear that in the example I show apps you have seen before that because both communities gather around the same nodes like the food, the selling or, or, or shopping, the services and the and religious in the form of the temple. And what I find interesting is, is that um, this collective uh, cellular research then jumped into prototyping spaces actually and uh, trying to uh, find out how the Western notions of, um, of durability and uh, the um, importance of built environment differs from the one that is typical of the Chinese. So in, in uh, Chinese Guang theory can if we don't take it in a derogatory way, it refers to a general state of understanding, which should be uh, a nice uh, motto for for a museum, because it uh, it relies on connections as well as the network and cultivates an intricate web of uh, personal and non-transferable uh, relations and uh, cultural awareness. And the uh, Chinese community is uh, highly centering on the family, the, and it, it's not going against the temporariness, and it is uh, really good at adaptation. And uh, provisionality should not be seen as uh, something bad or, or forcing it to be. So slow and organic development is important and uh, the considering the lifespan and in introducing stable values by the means of interpersonal relations. And uh, architecture transforms uh, in a social process based on uh, consensus, not a single term medium. And uh, it's a vehicle and transformer of identity charged with personal emotional choices. And it structures life and the mindset as well. Uh, and customized uh, spaces alter our relations and notions of private, communal and public spaces. And uh, namely emotional attachment to attachment to architecture has led to the development of architectural solutions in use which actually serve as personal protection networks. <laughs> um, 
I would like to uh, present to you uh, two Hungarian projects. Uh, first of all, the Museum of Ethnography in Budapest uh, uh, Unconventional Exhibition, and uh, secondly, uh, a young Hungarian contemporary artist, uh, Fugger. The exhibition of the Museum of Ethnography uh, about the everyday plastic objects uh, under to the, the prison uh, to, to present uh, the physical environment uh, of uh, everyday life uh, taken under investigation. Uh, the selection of the subjects uh, was there for uh, the material aspect. Uh, the based idea of uh, exhibition uh, was that the presentation of contemporary plastic work uh, connected the classic uh, uh, ethnography taxonomy. Uh, so the curators, the traditional uh, ethnography practice, uh, meets the contemporary ideas uh, uh, and objects. Uh, this was appearing in the uh, exhibition display. Uh, the exhibition research based on three different groups. Um, uh, one, the museum collection, uh, two, uh, the daily used uh, objects from visitors, and uh, three, uh, objects from uh, supermarkets. Uh, uh, it is important to point out uh, that the public was already involved uh, uh, into the preparation of the exhibition. Uh, any that could bring uh, plastic objects about uh, which these people could tell the uh, story and uh, co uh, the connection between them. Uh, does the museum step out uh, from its frame and uh, broke down the barriers between scientific research and the lay people? Uh, uh, this exhibition uh, became a mass culture project. The next project uh, is a contemporary artwork. Uh, the collective input uh, was born by a collaboration of uh, Thomas Svet and uh, two other artists. Uh, the work is an attempt uh, to create uh, a democratic art piece. Uh, this uh, project uh, starts with uh, gathering information uh, regarding what the hypothetical art piece uh, should, be, uh, should be like. The visitors get to contribute to the final outcome with their personal input. Uh, the collected information will be used as a receipt for the creation of the art piece. Uh, the second phase uh, of the project is the realization of the art piece in the most objective uh, way possible. Uh, the artists invite you to become a closer uh, by contributing with, uh, with an uh, attribute to the physical and uh, con conceptual uh, features of the artwork. Uh, in our work, we examine the outcome of uh, this democratic vote uh, for the more the social experiment uh, conducted in several cultural groups uh, may uh, shed light on exciting differences in the collective uh, consciousness of these people. The next project, called the uh, case study, uh, poses certain questions. Uh, what people or generally uh, the society expect uh, from the artist? Uh, or what does it really mean to be a contemporary artist? Uh, Thomas Svet uh, uh, interviewed people, including artists and uh, curators. Uh, to collect uh, information and uh, try to draw a map of expectations uh, concerning art historical references as well. Uh, the contribution of the audience thinking to be there starting conversations uh, was essential for him as his uh, collected opinions became the basic source of his ins installations. Uh, he created uh, wooden boxes similar to uh, tools uh, that museums use uh, to transfer uh, artworks in order to save them. Uh, the boxes are closed and uh, only a small pool uh, let us observe the content. Uh, the works are using uh, metamorphosis techniques uh, and uh, uh, the artist uh, created spaces in the boxes by cutting the wood 
so test the image uh, is appearing the, in uh, one angle. Um, the interviews and the opinions uh, are filled them. Uh, so the whole in installation is focused for contemporary art questions by exchanging ideas and uh, point of view. two uh, projects, uh, two Hungarian projects. The first is the Space Attunement Working Group, Climbing the Earth Museum, and the second is the Sigat Festival's uh, Museum Quarter. So, um, first I would like to present you a Hungarian artist, his name is Antal Lachner. Uh, he is a neo-conceptual artist in Hungary, who has also achieved international recognition. Um, he's working with a critical, but in the meantime, humorous and ironic uh, approach in his perfectly designed <coughs> and carried out project. Um, he's working at the border between the reality and the fiction, and his artworks questioning these traditional fetishized artworks and changes the behavior of the audience, because uh, in these artworks from the series called Inners, uh, the visitors have to try these uh, fitness machines and uh, have to do the motions of these manual labors without creating a final product. And this, uh, with this, he transforms the conventional white cube gallery to a really interactive space. Um, uh, there are two other works of him uh, the double gravity suite and a flotation cabin where you can uh, experience the anti-gravitation thing. So with these, they, <laughs> they're really changing the function of the museum. Um, uh, space. So he is the founder of this Space Determined Working Group because he held a university course and the members are young architects, designers and theory people. Uh, this project by them, uh, initiated by Ernst Museum Budapest, for an exhibition called Related Spaces. Uh, this project, High on Art, is about the battle of the urban dweller and the isolated, isolated cultural space. Um, because uh, there was a climbing wall, served as an alternative path of direct access through the window instead of the <laughs> stairs of the museum. But uh, this was not meant to make easy uh, the access, but to make it more complicated. Because with these, um, this physical experience, you had an access uh, to the museum without an entrance fee. So, uh, <laughs> yes, if you climb the wall, you can enter without. <laughs> so the next project is the Hungarian Siget Festival, maybe you were there or you know about that. It's a well-known music festival in Hungary and they uh, also always try to give uh, some wide range of cultural impressions from Hungary too. So, uh, for example, the Museum Quarter. Uh, the most Hungarian museums are represent themselves every year by now in this museum quarter because this is a great opportunity to them to affiliate with both the local and the foreigner audience and to allure them to their institutions because they offer many types of games and uh, do-it-yourself workshops related to their exhibitions. And there's another program I would like to show you. It's a creative workshop zone by uh, Medenta Group. <laughs> it's, um, it's an independent creative platform project founded in 2000. 
and there are some professional designers who, um, who are uniting the environmental attitude in many fields of art, uh, for example furniture and industrial design, that's why they held at SIGAT Festival uh, both bag and chair making workshops for the public where the participants had an opportunity to take part in the preparation and the design of their own product. So, thank you for your attention. I want to have such a bag as well. <laughs> say something uh, shortly about the themes I'm going to describe you. So the first subject of mine is to introduce you our Ms. Halle in Budapest, to say something about um, the Institute's um, specific scopes of activities and of course such as uh, the participation based museum pedagogy as well and uh, two exhibitions which are closely engaging I think to our uh, project is, uh, in its methodologies or in its so um, so something about Prince uh, Hala Budapest is uh, Prince Hala used to be this is a, a national institution uh, of uh, contemporary Hungarian and international uh, fine art in Budapest um, and just as a uh, progressive exhibition gallery is it uh, does not only bring uh, to the audience uh, relevant and interesting artistic uh, propositions but also make an effort uh, to take visitors into an in-depth uh, exploration of the displays as well. Um, to say something about uh, vision pedagogy uh, in Kunsthalle uh, and I'm trying to, I try to uh, focus uh, on our uh, target uh, group right here in the project. So to speak about um, museum pedagogy uh, is also an interesting thing uh, in line with uh, Kunsthalle and in line with the whole city, uh, Budapest as well, because Kunsthalle was the first one and, and uh, now almost the only museum, I, I think, uh, in Budapest, which is just trying to use uh, all the ways of museum pedagogy and, and methods uh, of museum pedagogy. And um, as I mean, um, just as uh, the uh, traditional and uh, modern ways, methods, and uh, and I think the, the Institute is uh, trying to uh, succeed in some experimental ways as well. Um, programs headed by Agnes Stavich, uh, who is uh, not just a professional of museum pedagogy and uh, uh, visual uh, education, but uh, an artist as well. It's really important. So uh, programs used to just concentrate on creativity and uh, to uh, trying to involve uh, most of our uh, senses into the process of understanding um, and maybe um, here the idea of participation it's really simple and in case of our Kunsthalle maybe it means um, a kind of um, efficient uh, practice or usage of the tools and methods of using pedagogy um, so um, then, the first exhibition I'm going to describe you. Um, the exhibition uh, held in uh, 2011, and the title has no one uh, belongs to more than you. 
and the translated Hungarian title was a simple majority majority. Uh, uh, the, the exhibition itself uh, offered a different opportunity to young artist groups from whom uh, the creative process goes hand in hand uh, with community based thinking. Um, these groups, thanks to the collective creative process, explore problems in art from various per perspectives. Um, um, and at that time, the space of, of uh, Kunsthalle served a uh, dual function. Uh, this, uh, the exhibition to the, to the traditional role of displaying the artworks, as usual, but constitute a collective place in which the artists themselves were also present. Uh, and I think the exhibition was a really uh, sharp answer for the classical and maybe well-known and, and uh, sometimes a stereotypical uh, question, and this is what is art. And, and just as I saw the groups, just try to uh, describe design design and uh, created their answers in the way to um, just let us look into the art processes and and it just revealed it um, is sometimes nothing more than just um, uh, making uh, Thai pasta together in the kitchen <laughs> and um, and yeah that's what uh, that was the, the definition of group of Kitchen Budapest and, uh, and I think it means that uh, maybe uh, cooking together sometimes the same like cooking together and um, what is participation here maybe it's just like nothing more than uh, existing in a community um, another exhibition Exhibition had in 2001 called uh, Service. Um, the Service exhibition um, aim was uh, to bring closer um, contemporary art and, and the public. Um, and the uh, constellation of services leads to the uh, creation of personal relationships. Uh, enable uh, the direct communication between artists and audience. Services were applied there as a, a structural device to set up the rules of the art games. Game. Um, the function of services was given by the uh, makers, artists and art mediators such as art historians and artists and reflects the uh, position from which they uh, are declared. Um, and there were some categories of course of services uh, in the exhibition, uh, for example services to the audience, uh, such as a call center where um, uh, visitors could have a phone call with the curator uh, or uh, they could uh, rent an artist uh, uh, to just use uh, him or her as a guide um, and there were a complete um, uh, camera system and a connected electronic uh, board on the wall and called uh, a tendermeter um, and it seemed like uh, to be in a stock market um, and uh, it was showing uh, data all the time about the attendance uh, of the exhibition and uh, about the most uh, visited artworks as well. Um, and my Last task to, <laughs> I need to describe you. It's a common point. Maybe this is the most uh, interesting project. Um, so, let's talk about common point. Common point is a board game and a project by uh, Big Hope. Um, and it's also interesting because, uh, because it's a project also by um, uh, our professor, Miklos Erhard, uh, from our university. And maybe you just realize uh, the name of uh, Monopoly is paraphrased from the Venom game Monopoly. Uh, but unlike uh, Monopoly, the goal of Monopoly is not the exhaustion through monopolization, but rather uh, 
the expansion and preservation of the self propelling sustainable system of recycling, production and dis distribution. Like, um, uh, I just, I got a suggestion for you after the presentation to just visit the homepage because the artist just uh, described this uh, much better than me because uh, like monopoly, the rules of monopoly, it's uh, it's not as easy just to describe you now in maybe uh, some phrases. So, um, but to say something shortly about the game. Uh, Commonopoly is a system where resources are held in common, uh, so the board game provides a platform for, for a shared activity. The game exists as a form by players generate the content throughout the period of presentation. A loose documentation of creative acts and contributions during the game is made in form of booklets much of the participants' creativity remains undocumented as players are invited to remove objects collectively created and pass them on, distributing them into public circulation outside the gallery. I'm going to tell you some um, uh, examples <laughs> later on. The inter uh, interactions proposed by different boxes uh, designed to demonstrate and symbolize features and concepts found to be uh, common in existing examples of small scale practical and large scale theoretical uh, proposals of economic alternatives to market capitalism. Uh, these include uh, um, uh, visitors of uh, 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 it is on the uh, sharing, but, but it's just uh, you see on the slide sharing with collaboration, uh, solidarity, exchange, mutual trust, and uh, uh, sustainability. And to tell you um, uh, maybe one example, um, because uh, the project uh, visited uh, some cities in the world, uh, just like uh, Taipei. I think uh, Taipei was the um, was the first one in uh, 2004, and um, and um, because. Uh, uh, the, uh, the board game content uh, used to change from city to city. So the type uh, type of game was about uh, a city sizing and city departure as well. And uh, for example, um, uh, one exercise about this was to just uh, uh, Please uh, try to just describe uh, one of your favorite uh, space in the city and uh, tell the other uh, player why uh, this is your favorite place uh, or um, uh, try to find yourself uh, a bit of profession um, for this time while you're uh, playing with the game and just try to uh, describe the uh, next player, why did you uh, choose uh, uh, this profession? Or um, if you have uh, something which you just don't need anymore, uh, just uh, uh, leave here your phone number or maybe your email address uh, because who knows the next player uh, may be going to want it and and it's a um, possibility for anyone to just um, ask something about the, um, what you don't need. <laughs> and um, yeah, and just that's it. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> thanks for your patience, and particularly thanks to the girls in the chat. Questions, comments, welcome. Right Not so much to me, more to the professionals. <laughs>